Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Varam Dermatevosian. He is a lecturer at the American University of Armenia and a senior fellow at the National Academy of Sciences, and he's also an expert on Turkey. Uh, welcome to CivilNet, Varam. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we invited you today to talk about the events that are taking place in Turkey and Turkey's relationship vis-à-vis -vis the European Union. Uh, on September 30th, Prime Minister uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan um, issued, revealed his long-awaited democracy package. Uh, and it came just a few weeks before the EU's report uh, on Turkey. Uh, and in that democracy package, there were a number of reforms. Uh, some were surprising, some were expected. Uh, could you talk to us today about the timing of the report and the contents of the report? How important uh, is it today for reform uh, in Turkey? Well, certainly the timing is very important because it tells a lot about the message uh, and the whole objective of that uh, reform package. The, the date, uh, September 30th, was the uh, last day when the European uh, Europe Euro Commission is closing the door for all possible uh, developments to monitor. Um, so September 30th was the last possible day that Erdogan could choose to deliver his message. Because if we look at the report that was issued yesterday, we'll see that if um, without the reform package, uh, the re report could have been uh, completely different because it changed the, the overall tone, it, it was more positive. But if we go into details, if we go into the content of the democracy package, we see that it is more of a promise uh, rather than uh, well-thought-out uh, ideas and um, steps. What were some of the promises then, as you put it, in the package? Mm -hmm. The promises uh, were basically everything was a promise because uh, some of those uh, Ideas, some of, of these reforms, they need to be they need to be put in, the, in on the legal prim, premises in order to be to be to be effective. Of course, some of them could have been um, became effective after a week, as it was a case with student oath or uh, returning back the, uh, the monastery to the Assyrians. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we see that um, th th this package um, clearly uh, kicked off the. Um, uh, the local elections, which are due in uh, March, so it it basically um, <clears throat> started the date uh, for the upcoming elections. And uh, we need, of course, a Kurdish issue is uh, is a core of this reform package. Uh, that whole package was basically about the Kurds, and it was about uh, Erdogan of keeping his promise of uh, well, negotiating uh, with uh, Ocalan mm -hmm. on the withdrawing of PKK forces out of Turkey mm -hmm. and in return of, um, uh, clear, uh, of making reforms on, on many long-weighted issues. So um, it basically, a democracy package should be divided into three lines. Uh, the first is, of course, uh, the more symbolic uh, essence of the reform. The, the, the second is more political oriented reforms, so the more domestic issues. And the second, the third uh, layer of, of this, this package is, of course, a Kurdish issue. But uh, the, it's, it's interesting that uh, each time Erdogan comes out with this kind of reforms, he always uh, puts the word democracy in it. So it's not the first time. And, uh, my expectations are uh, are modest uh, mm -hmm. as it comes to these sure. reforms. Cautious, yeah. Because when you talk about the three elements of the package, one, as you said in the beginning, was the symbolic, which was the student oath. Because in Turkey, all students have to take an oath every morning, and um, the other was the the head scarf. Um, but what's interesting to me was some of the electoral reforms, a possible reduction of the 10% threshold for parties to enter uh, parliament. Uh, will these things, as you said, for example, that particular one will require uh, amendments to the legislation? Oh, certainly, because the election law um, pro uh, provides that 10% um, uh, threshold um, is regulated through the election uh, law, um, which was adopted in, in 1983. Right. Um, so 
and that issue and also the headscarf issue, they should be regulated uh, through the legal amendments. Otherwise, uh, they are just empty words and promises. Right. And were there any time frames within that democracy package well, or, were they, or was it just a list of no, things it was, that... Um, you know, the, there hasn't been uh, uh, much elaboration on, on the package, so it still remains to be seen. Uh, how these are going to be implemented and how, what is the time frame, what's the uh, uh, schedule uh, for implementing all these reform packages. I'm sure that um, Erdogan won't be able to implement them in due time before the local elections, but at least he set a new discourse, public discourse, that he'll be capitalizing uh, while heading to the yeah. elections. Well, just following some of the reactions in Turkish media, following the release uh, of, of the democracy package, there was a lot of, I would say, not cautious, but some pessimis pessimism that this was yet again another show. Uh, there was really no content there. I mean, there was content, but just uh, it was more empty promises. Um, what has, in your opinion, been a mainstream Turkish reaction to the package? Uh, uh, again, it's, uh, uh, the, the general reaction was more cautious because, it, it, like I said, it wasn't the first time and certainly it's not going to be the last time mm -hmm. because um, uh, uh, the main message was, like I said, about the Kurds and c the Kurdish reaction was uh, uh, divided basically. Some of them uh, moderates, moderates were, were claiming that, well, this is good for the moment, uh, while the more radical um, groups uh, saying that, no, this is not the this yeah. not this was not that we are striving to have, especially the language issue, as you well, know. Because part of the package is that now Kurdish language could be taught in schools, in private schools, which makes a difference because uh, the Kurds wanted to have it in regular schools, in public schools, so so they need to go to private schools to get the their, language their, courses. Right. Well, <clears throat> as we said yesterday, that you uh, issued its progress report on Turkey, and, and as we know, CivilNet covered extensively the riots, the uprising that took place in, uh, in, in Istanbul, in Gezi Park. And as part of the, the, the report, in the EU report says, um, uncompromising stance in the face of dissent and failure to protect fundamental rights and freedoms. This was exemplified in late May and early June when police used excessive force in response to a major wave of protests where four people were killed and scores were injured. Um, there was damage to property and so forth. Do you think that um, those rights were also another factor that uh, contributed to Erdogan's uh, democracy? Yeah, no, uh, certainly. Um, Erdogan became a different person uh, after the Gezi Park protest because he wasn't anticipating, he wasn't thinking that, uh, uh, that uh, the participants, the protesters in Gezi Park could be so vocal, so adamant in their demands. And, and yes, um, the, the report which came out yesterday uh, underlines this issue that because of that, because of the, uh, of the things that led to Gezi Park protests, um, Erdogan need to be more um, cautious when it comes to democ when it comes to making politics in general, because uh, democracy is not about a majority in the parliament, uh, as it is mentioned in the report. Right, right. It is about um, um, f um, making more participatory uh, democracy. So that's, that was an important message. Of course, it wasn't the first time Gül was mentioning this quite often um, during the time of protests. And uh, what is interesting in this report, the um, president is um, singled out um, as, a, as a person who, uh, who played an important role in this time of turmoil in Turkey. And uh, he's mentioned as a, as, a, as, as a one possessing a conciliatory voice within Turkey. Mm. It's, it's rather interesting that um, one, one year prior to the, up, to the presidential elections, Europeans sort of um, highlighting their favorite uh, candidate, I would say, a, a person that they would so much um, welcome if he decides to run for the presidential elections uh, next year. The EU report, uh, the progress report on Turkey, was there any mention of Armenia-Turkey relations? Well, what is interesting that um, this time uh, it just mentioned that uh, the, um, the Turkish Armenian protocols, uh, were, which were signed in 2009, are, are not yet ratified yet. But what is interesting about this is that uh, in 2000, uh, for the first time, the report mentioned that the Turkish-Armenian border is closed because of 
Turkey because of political decision. That's of what Turkey it said in the report this time. In 2000, uh, so that formulation was kept until 2009. Right. And in 2000, until, yeah, the yeah. protocols, and, and, and then in 2010, 2010, that was changed because of obvious reasons. For and the, uh, the second thing, what is which, which is interesting about the crypto Armenians, mm -hmm. last year's report contained a very interesting formulation that for the first time, crypto Armenians are becoming more. Uh, um, more cautious about their identity, they start to attend uh, churches, and, but this year report has no mentioning of that issue. And I assume that this was considered by Turkish government as a sensitive issue, and I am that's sure why the Europeans chose not to, to mention. Yeah, it. I, I, that's my that's my understanding. That's uh, how uh, how I analyze it, uh, this issue. I guess it's also interesting. Um, uh, you know, <clears throat> the EU's ascension process. Uh, sorry, Turkey's process. Uh, uh, towards the European Union has been at a stalemate the last uh, number of years. Uh, do you see, I mean, the report, while it does condemn the excessive use of force and the problem with lack of plurality and, and participatory democracy, in general, it seems to be rather, I don't, cautiously favorable. Uh, do you think that, you know, we read that uh, the EU's position a uh, condemnation of Turkey's human rights records in the past was humiliating for Turkey and public opinion had shifted and people were no longer interested in pursuing that route. Uh, what do you think the prospects of uh, Turkey-EU uh, negotiations for Turkey's entry into the EU, where, where are they at now? Well, they are far away from they are supposed to be because when they started the real uh, negotiation uh, elections, um, uh, sorry, negotiations um, in 2005, in October, uh, immediately became obvious that uh, on many issues uh, there are deep contradictions between the, between e the EU and Turkey. And first of all, uh, that comes to Cyprus problem. Mm -hmm. um, Turkey was supposed to do more than it actually done throughout these years. First of all, uh, Turkey had to open the ports uh, and airports for Cyprus um, air airplanes and uh, vessels, which Turkey didn't do so far. Uh, and which left a huge impact on the tone of the re report that was issued yesterday and for the last uh, seven years. And basically, uh, Turkey uh, felt short of um, implementing one of the key requirements of the EU to recognize the Republic of Cyprus as one entity. And last year, the report had some negative tones, and one of the reasons for that was that last year, uh, the Cyprus was a rotating presidency uh, in, in EU, and Turkey refused to have any uh, deal with um, the, the president at that time. So that issue left a huge impact on the general tone of the uh, report last year. Well, this year, things have changed, and uh, that's uh, one of the reasons that uh, yesterday's report had more positive um, uh, assessments of the reforms that have been carried out in Turkey. Uh, so um, that brings us to the idea that in, in Turkey they have, a, they have a good understanding that they're not doing enough, they're not doing their homework to the Turks' expectations. Contrary to the Turkish political leaders' expectation, this report was more positive um, because Egemen Barış was the person responsible for these negotiations. He was criticized pretty much in, within Turkey by the opposition in Turkey because instead of finding a consensus with European politicians, he was all the time making our counter arguments very yeah. um, pejorative, I would say, statements about the European Union, about European prospects. Uh, so he didn't help in the process at all? Uh, we, we, we don't have the Turkish official response yet, so Turks haven't uh, uh, responded to the Turkish government. And the reason was is that there is Kurban Bayram, a sacrifice um, uh, these um, holidays in Turkey. So they, they promised to get to go back in a week time. That's right. So we haven't heard about, uh, from Turks for that reason. So, uh, but I'm sure, um, you know, you know, to to um, uh, you know to make their stance right, they have to anyway. They have to criticize because it's it's like a habit, because because for them, uh, for, because for Turks, um, uh, because it's mentioned in in, in the report that uh, the political climate climate is very polarized within Turkey. Of, of, obviously, Erdogan has to uh, turn this back uh, and say that. Um, it's 
European Union has also done its part of the job in order to make the political climate um, polarized. Polarized, right. and you know uh, what is interesting about the uh, the European Union. One of the reasons that the European Union has changed its mind is. I would say the, the, the general political preferences that uh, Erdogan has put on the table for the last two years because he, uh, he hinted about Turkey's positive shift towards a Shanghai cooperation um, organization and also to the BRICS uh, and also to the Eurasian Union. So all these things um, obviously made Europeans a bit worried, nervous, uh, sure. nervous because they don't want to lose Turkey, they just want uh, EU become a benchmark for all the reforms um, uh, and that are to be implemented in Turkey. Well, uh, Varam John, thank you very much for that very informative uh, uh, response and, and answers to the questions that we have. We should be looking forward then to see how things progress as the local elections come up in March 2015, uh, 14, excuse me, and then we have presidential elections coming up in Turkey. So it will be interesting to see how Erdogan uh, fulfills some of the promises in the democracy package. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you for joining CivilNet. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was Varam Dermatevosian, a lecturer at the American University of uh, Armenia and an expert on Turkey. Thank you for watching.